So up next, we are going to hear from Mr. Mark Allen. So it is my pleasure to welcome Mr. Mark Allen. He is a Google Cloud account manager for the National Institute of Health. He's focused on extramural uh, researcher as net enablement. Prior to joining Google, Mark to work at Microsoft, aiding his higher education clients to adopt the cloud. Mark has a BS in business administration from the California University of Pennsylvania and MSIT from Carnegie Mellon University. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Mark Allen. Oh, can we uh, mark a co-host please? Hey, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, thanks for the intro, Laura, I really appreciate it. Uh, I also invited Ashoki, who is a business development rep here at Google Cloud, uh, and she's gonna share off the slides. Uh, I'm working from my phone and my iPad today, unfortunately. So uh, Ashoki, if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing all the slides, please. Uh, sorry, who's uh, Ashoki, is it Akshay? Uh, O-S- I-O-K-E, and then her last name is D-O-F-O. There you go, perfect. Excellent, all right, I think we're good. Thank you much, thank you very much, Ashoki. Um, so as mentioned, I'm, I'm Mark Allen. Uh, I worked at Microsoft for nine years before joining Google, uh, and, and again, very much helping my uh, higher education customers adopt the cloud. I'm based out of San Francisco, California, but I did work for Microsoft uh, two years on the East Coast outside of New York City. Uh, prior to joining Microsoft, I was in the customer space. I was actually in education. I was a director of IT uh, and, and, you know, worked on a lot of infrastructure stuff. I won't get into all the details, of course. So uh, I, I kind of still maintain that customer perspective, really. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here's our quick agenda. We're going to talk a little bit briefly about why Google Cloud. Uh, I'm going to try my best not to mention any, any product names. I think I'm going to mention one. Uh, and then we're going to talk about NIH and the Strides program, of course, why you're here. Uh, how to join the program, and then what happens after you enroll, right? And then we'll switch to a QA and a uh, and we'll go from there. So first off, why Google Cloud? So next, next slide, please, Ashoki. So when you think of Google, you probably think of the search engine, right? The, the very generic white background, uh, beautifully colored letters, uh, and you type in your search, and within milliseconds, you get your results, right? Uh, next slide. But what you don't think of is the infrastructure behind it, right? There are thousands of servers uh, that are running the google.com search engine, as well as all of our applications. Uh, as a matter, matter of fact, we've been, uh, Google has been building, you know, consumer-based applications uh, since 97, right? Uh, so if you go to the next slide, you'll see kind of a, a great timeline and a history of the, the major products that Google has released. Uh, we've been in the consumer space since before 97, uh, and each of these applications on here has a billion users for each application. Two of them actually have two billion users. And you'll note that all of them are 100% powered by machine learning, right? Uh, so you're gonna have access to slide deck. And if you look at the little blue uh, notes beneath each application, there is at least two of the, the machine learning powered uh, features of those applications, right? Uh, I guarantee if you have children, they're using YouTube. Uh, I know my nieces religiously. Uh, and so, you know, we've, we've definitely helped uh, with machine learning to do some better thumbnails, better recommendations, right? Uh, always, always looking at the algorithm and making sure that our consumers are, are kind of getting the, the needs that they have. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, a few more little tidbits about Google, right? So Google is the world's largest purchaser of renewable energy. In fact, all of our global operations have been powered by 100% renewable energy since 2017. Uh, here you got a couple pictures of the the big uh, windmills, of course, the, the the wind farm, and then the solar panels as well, right? So uh, we're very committed to sustainability and, and going green. And so if you partner with Google, you are definitely making a green choice as well. Next slide. One of the reasons I joined Google is their dedication to hybrid and multi-cloud solutions. Uh, other cloud providers certainly have this. Uh, I'm not here to, to knock on them, but uh, essentially, you know, their their approach is more of a hardware uh, lock-in or vendor lock-in, right? Uh, Google's approach, uh, even outside of hybrid multi-cloud, is, is a software-based approach, right? Um, so we have developed, you know, Google Kubernetes, and now that is certainly a, a de facto standard out in the world, right? 
Um, what the only product I'll mention is Anthos, right? Anthos is built on that Kubernetes engine. And, and this is kind of a big game changer. It's a software-based solution that allows you to essentially run Google Cloud services on-premises or in other clouds even, right? Um, so we have a lot of great flagship products. And maybe you say, hey, my data is, is on-premise and I need to keep it on-premise. Uh, you can bring the cloud down to you with, with Anthos, right? Um, so we're, we're very committed to hybrid and multi-cloud solutions and the approach if, you know, uh, ideally one day everybody's in the cloud, uh, you know, but, but along the way, we're going to have, you know, certainly a hybrid approach as well as many cloud providers involved. Next slide. A uh, couple slides real quick on security. Our approach to security in two words is trust nothing. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, essentially what I'm talking about here is we don't consider traffic, any internet traffic, um, whether it's internal or external to be different, right? There's no difference as far as we're concerned. So we build in uh, layered defense in depth, right? Is we, we essentially look for mitigations and multiple defenses within each layer and in between each layer, right? Uh, and so with this approach, we've essentially been able to create a very secure cloud computing area. Next slide. Uh, if you have any compliance needs, we certainly meet all of, or exceed all of the government requirements for security and privacy protection. Uh, we're happy to give you some security attestation reports. Uh, you can just go to our, our uh, cloud security command center and, and take a look at all the reports yourself as well. Um, but we have all the big ones, of course, FedRAMP, we have the High Trust, we have HIPAA. Uh, um, there's a bunch of ISO ones as well. So whatever your needs are, chances are we, we meet those needs. Uh, and if we don't, we're certainly with, working to, uh, willing to work with you on getting those compliance certifications. All right, next slide, and then slide that. So what is Stride? So take a brief second to talk about the National Institutes of Health. So NIH is comprised of 27 institutes, centers, and offices. Uh, we just call them ICs. So apologies if I use acronyms, uh, but when I say IC, I just mean one of the ICs uh, regarding the NIH. Uh, I got a couple examples up there. Uh, the, pr the presentation before me, I think, mentioned the NCI as well, so I think you're familiar with that one. Uh, I put a link for the reporter up here. Reporter is an NIH tool that they have built that allows anybody to kind of see all of the grants that are out there per institution or even per PI, principal investigator, right? So uh, you're welcome to use that reporter and kind of see, you know, you can see how much funding your institutions, you know, received, what grants your PIs are working on, uh, all the good stuff there, essentially. What I didn't, uh, what I didn't actually put on the slide is regarding how NIH is funding is set up. And, and it's very, very complex, but at a very high level, uh, if you read their strategic report, 80% of their funding goes to extramural universities, uh, sorry, extramural institutions. Um, out of that 80%, 70% uh, is, is roughly uh, all higher education, right? Um, so that's around 50% of their total budget. Their total budget for 2022 was around $49 billion. Uh, so NIH is committed to extramural research and, and allowing others to kind of, you know, do the research that, that makes sense from a biomedical standpoint. Uh, next slide. Okay, so we're, we're keep, keep it on this slide, actually, uh, Shoki. So STRIDES, right? Let's talk about STRIDES. Uh, STRIDES is an acronym, of course. It stands for the Science and Technology Research Infrastructure for Discovery, Experimentation, and Sustainability. Essentially, it's a program they built because they see the value in cloud. Uh, and they're really just trying to accelerate biomedical discovery, right? Uh, Google was first to enter this partnership in July of 2018. Uh, AWS signed on recently the, uh, after that as well. And then I think Microsoft Azure just signed up in July of 2021, right? So all the three major cloud providers are in there, um, you know, but we're a little unique in that not only did they partner with us first, but our AI and ML capabilities, as I kind of mentioned before, are, are, are differentiated enough that, that we have a very big uh, say in kind of how that AI is done, right? Uh, I won't talk about AlphaFold here, uh, but that's certainly one of the, the hot buzzwords when it comes to machine learning, right? Um, and, and that's kind of true to just Google's testament of AI machine learning. Next slide, please. From a benefit standpoint, when you sign on to the Strides program, the, the first benefit most people realize right away is those deep discounts on Google Cloud. Uh, now, normally I put the pricing table in here uh, because we're being recorded, I, we, we elected not to do that, but I can verbally say at least that the, there is 25% discount on compute and storage. The 25% discount on compute applies to all compute resources, including GPUs. Uh, so if you have high compute needs, the discounts are there and, and they're provided to you, you know, via Google Cloud from NIH, again, to get more research for your dollar, right? And, and hopefully, uh, hopefully to uh, ex, uh, accelerate that biomedical discovery. 
Uh, other big disc, other big benefits we always talk about are the access to training. There's a discount on training programs as well. We also have some free uh, and no cost training options. I'll talk about this briefly at the end. Um, you also get a direct relationship with NIH, right? We are happy to kind of make connections to program officers, people with NICs, uh, whoever it makes sense to kind of have a conversation to talk more about the research, the programs. Uh, and, and then if you're enrolling in strides and you actually have some uh, you know, architecture discussion questions, we can certainly make those connections as well. And of course, that last big benefit is that faster time to insight. Again, we're always trying to get uh, the results quicker so you can spend more time on, on the science versus on the infrastructure itself. Uh, next slide. And then, so one big thing I want to point out is there's, there is no upfront commitment to joining Strides. There's no money you pay to get into the program. It essentially is provided at no cost uh, because we're gonna, you're gonna use NIH dollars for your research in the cloud. And then next slide. So another uh, great um, benefit is increased advocacy, right? <clears throat> so everybody on this call has an account team at Google Cloud, right? Every university, every college, you have an account team at Google Cloud. That account team usually uh, consists of an account manager like myself. You probably have a customer engineer who's kind of the more technical uh, person on that call or, or engage with you. Um, and there's probably a few others that, that are on your account team. On the NIH account team as well, right? I'm one of the account managers. We have support, we have consulting, we have customer engineers and architects, data scientists. It's a really large account team. Um, and if you if you click on the slide real quick, Ashoki. So when you join the program, you essentially get, you know, the advocacy from both your account team as well as us, right? So we're here to help any NIH funded researcher uh, get what they need to out of Google Cloud essentially, right? Uh, obviously within reason, but my role as account manager is to be an advocate for NIH as an account, but also anybody I'm working with, right? And I'm focused on extramurals. So it's around 3000 institutions I'm working with. Uh, next slide. Oh, and then there's a quick little red blurb. Yeah, uh, more advocacy within Google and within NIH as well, right? Uh, next slide. Public data sets. So one of the big, uh, an another big feature of the Strides program itself is trying to get access to you know open data, right? Trying to make sure that the data that biomedical researchers need is available in the cloud. Uh, I think on the presentation before this, I heard Anvil, uh, sorry, um, all of us. Uh, and so all of us is actually working with uh, the team there and we're getting all of us on Google Cloud as well, right? So there's a lot of great uh, public data sets we have available. We have some that are uh, publicly available, but not in the, in the program itself, but you can still access them. There's things like imaging data commons, there's SRA toolkits. Uh, and we're always adding more data sets as well, right? So I'm currently working with a PI out of UCSF who manages a 400 terabyte database. And we're working with uh, the program manager for the public data sets program to get it in the cloud, right? Um, with the way we see it, the more data that's in the cloud, the quicker your research can get done. You don't have to spend time moving your data around, massaging it. It's already there, it's already ready to go, and you can just kind of start your research. Next slide. All right, flexible options to join. Let's dive into this, right? So, uh, Ashoki, I'm going to have you uh, uh, click. Uh, when I say click, if you don't mind, um, this this slide builds out, right? So, uh, if you don't mind, click click once. And so, this is you. You are a researcher out there, uh, and and you know maybe you're getting NIH funded dollars. Uh, maybe you're getting funds from other organizations. You know whatever it may be. Um, uh, click again. And so, you are probably reporting up to a department. Uh, if you click again that department has other researchers and click again and then again that department's up into a school or an institute and if you click again one more time uh you know that reports up to a university uh that might have more schools it might have an academic med center right but essentially there are nih funded researchers all throughout this organization and so what our goal is to sign the strides agreement at the highest level right we're happy to sign individual researchers, uh, departments, schools, institutes, whatever it takes, right? Because sometimes that university procurement process can take, you know, five, eight, nine months, right? So when you have NIH funded dollars and you want to kind of experience the benefits, especially the discounts right away, we're happy to work with you to get you signed in you know, as quickly as possible, right? Uh, to click one more time, the one thing that we really, really like to have too is kind of an IT support as well, right? So. We understand not every organization has IT support or maybe research computing. 
Um, and so it doesn't need to be a full-fledged IT. We just need somebody that is kind of going to be that point person for billing IDs uh, and, and really understanding the process, right? So we work with that person or team of people to make sure they understand the process, what information is needed to get an ID, a uh, billing ID, and then and then kind of, you know, giving out from there, right? Um, so this is kind of like like the, the pyramid that we always, we always do, the pyramid of, of what we're trying to get to, right? The higher we sign, the, the more benefits all the NIH researchers. Next slide. So I'm going to talk about these options to sign on very, very quickly because they can get in the weeds very, very quickly as well. So uh, we have three major options. First option is direct to Kerasoft. Uh, Kerasoft is the federal distributor of the Google Cloud service for NIH, right? And for many of our actual uh, public sector customers. Uh, if you click once, um, this is a very, very simple process. Uh, you would essentially engage with Kerasoft. We would set up those conversations and, and you can essentially sign on very, very easily. Uh, if you go to the next slide, this is where we have a little more flexibility, and this is where most of our education customers kind of want to fall, right? Uh, and so you'll notice I have the same image kind of twice, and so we'll talk about it uh, twice, essentially. So we have two, we have a few resellers we work with. The two that most of our customers sign through is Onyx and Burwood Group. Both of these resellers are a value-add reseller, and they, they uh, first, there's no further uh uh, margin, right? It's not like they're, they're cutting into the discounts at all. You sign on with them and it's still no cost, but both of them actually have a very unique billing tool. And if you are that kind of IT person that is going to be doing all the billing IDs, that those billing tools that they provide are, are just hugely helpful as far as being able to kind of differentiate where the money is going per grant and per project, right? Um, so if you are interested in joining Strides, we will definitely loop in Onyx and Burwood. You can have a conversation with them. If you like not to go with a reseller and just stick direct to Kerasoft through option one, the billing is going to be kind of up to you, right? Making sure that you are able to report on the billing is going to be fall on your hands. Um, and, and the reason for that, for all of this essentially, is all of these funds are federal funds, right? Which means they are subject to congressional reporting. Uh, and NIH is very big on this, of course. Uh, and we all should be too, it's our tax dollars. So, um, but essentially if, if it's not reported well, then there's definitely a lot of questions, right? So uh, engaging with Onyx and Burbage, your best, your best way to go. They have a very great tool. On the right, they'll notice the only difference is internet too, right? Uh, you are welcome to sign on with internet too. <clears throat> you can be a member or a non-member, but if you, if you sign the strides agreement through internet too, you also get to realize not only the benefits of the strides program, but the benefits of internet too as well. And so I'll cover those in about two more slides. Uh, if you click once, uh, there's another little red blurb, no increase in price with the use of a reseller, right? Next slide, please. <clears throat> now the last one's very, very quick and, and dirty. Essentially, if you already have an existing agreement with Google Cloud or with Kerasoft, we can leverage that agreement as well, right? There's not many customers that fall into this category. Uh, it's typically, let's, let's use a reseller, let's use, you know, make sure we also get internet too. Um, this is something you're also welcome to explore if you want to. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, this is just a quick summary. I'm not going to cover this in the interest of time, but you are welcome to read it uh, and, and you know, ask any questions later if you need to. Next slide, please. So Internet 2. So there's an Internet 2 Net Plus GCP agreement, right? This was pre-negotiated with four universities uh, to kind of provide benefits to members uh, and, and non-members, quite frankly, um, uh, for Internet 2 and for Google Cloud, essentially. Uh, so it's essentially there's um, the, the biggest thing we always talk about is if you join through Internet 2, not only will your NIH workloads get the 25% discount, but any non NIH workload will receive a 5% discount on compute and storage as well. Right. There's also a lot of other benefits, of course. Uh, we invite you to reach out to that email address, netplus at Internet 2. You work with a guy named Bob Flynn. Uh, Bob is from Indiana University, one of the initial four universities that helped uh, negotiate this contract. Uh, and Bob's amazing, so I can't talk about him enough. Uh, he's he's very knowledgeable. Uh, he's very customer focused, uh, and and he'll, he'll set you straight. So I uh, invite you to reach out to that email email address and talk to Bob, and uh, and he'll tell you all the cool stuff. Next slide, please. All right, here's just a quick list of uh, Internet to Net Plus Google Cloud subscribers. Right. Your college or university may be signed on to NetPlus, but maybe through Azure, maybe through AWS. Uh, maybe you're a non-member of Internet2 as well, right? So this is a quick list, and I put the link in the, in the notes. So you're welcome to kind of bruise that as well. Next slide. All right, so after enrolling in Strides, uh, we 
we engaged with Internet2 and we got some feedback, right? Uh, we asked a lot of uh, questions, or Internet2 asked a lot of questions, I should say, on kind of, hey, you have access to the Strides program. You're an NIH researcher. Well, you know, why is there a disconnect? Why, why are you not using the Strides program, right? Uh, and the biggest result we got back was actually just communication. They just weren't aware they had access to it. And so we have kind of created a success plan to make sure that going forward, when a university or college or med center or even just department signs on, this is kind of a, the keys to success to make sure that all the researchers there know they have access to it and how to get access to it. So to start again, we have an IT support process. And it's more about the billing account ID process. It doesn't need to be IT. It can be research computing. It can be a PI or a PI's assistant. We have a few of those examples. Um, just somebody that's kind of there to say, yep, I know I need to get the, this type of information from a researcher. Uh, and then I can, I can send it to NIH and I will get my, the, the, my project ID, my billing ID, right? So uh, very, very simple process. We just kind of need that one person at least. Uh, the other major things we found is having a website. Uh, I think on this page, it says a public page. It doesn't need to be public. We do have two examples from NYU and University of Wisconsin-Madison. Welcome to read those. Um, but it could be on your internet as well, but some type of web page that for researchers that kind of says, here's the NIH Strides program, here's why it's important to you, and here's how to get access to it, right? After that website's completely finalized, uh, an email needs to be kind of sent, some type of communication, whatever that may be, uh, sent out to the research community at that university saying, hey, you have access to this, check out the web page, if you have any questions, here's some email addresses or people to reach out to, whatever it might be. Uh, and then finally, a launch event. Um, this used to just say webinar, I've added seminar because things are opening up now and then hopefully we can get on site to customers more, uh, but essentially having, uh, you know, a large audience of people that are, that are interested in NIH funded research and, and interested in Google cloud, you know, join the webinar or seminar kind of saying, Hey, here's all the questions. Here's all the answers to your questions. Here's how the program works. Uh, Google's happy to join those. NIH is happy to join those. The resellers, internet too. They're all happy to join. We're, we're here for you guys. So. Um, after you guys sign up and we want to get to that point of like, hey, let's make sure we evangelize the Strides program, we're here to help make that happen. Next slide, please. So another piece of feedback from that Internet 2 survey was around training. Now, I'm going to talk briefly at the end about some free and no cost training options. But I also wanted to highlight that we work with NIH very, very closely. And we, last year, we helped develop custom training. Right. The title is Introduction to Biomedical Data Science in Google Cloud. We delivered it seven times in 2021 to the intramural researchers. Uh, I think the first three times there's, you know, kind of reiterations of let's make sure we, we change this or modify this or speak about this more, this, this thing less. Um, but after those, those three initial uh, trainings, the last four went off without a hitch. We had a lot of success and uh, we do always seek anonymous feedback. And so there's a quote there from a researcher who joined one of those sessions. Uh, there's 16 attendees per class. There's a sample agenda on the right. Uh, if you're interested in training, uh, uh, whether it's, it's just custom training or other training options, feel free to reach out and we'll put you in touch with your account manager to talk through those. Next slide. Okay, I am almost finished here. So this is an eyesore. I apologize. And this is two this is screenshots from a doc I have. And so you're going to get access to the PDF with all these links at a very, very high level. I'm going to talk about just a few of them, right? The top left is the Google Cloud free trial. So everybody is welcome to get $300 in credits of Google Cloud services. Uh, it does require a credit card, but I will point out that it will not charge your credit card uh, until you say so, right? And until that's that $300 expired. So what happens is you put your credit card in, you get $300 in credits. There's also a free tier available where we have certain cloud services that are always free. You're welcome to use those credits until they're exhausted. After they're exhausted, then you're prompted. Do you wanna use your credit card or not? You can say no, and that's it. You won't get charged. It'll shut down your services and, and we can all move on, right? So uh, I know there's always hesitation using credit card, but, but Google is very open on this and very aware of, of the fears. So uh, uh, please don't be hesitant to, to sign into that program. Uh, I'm gonna jump down to uh, Google Cloud Research Credits. If you have a research project that you are working on, uh, and you know, maybe you applied for an NIH grant and you didn't get it, um, but it's a cool research to topic. You're welcome to click on that link and apply for research credits from Google. I think we do up to $5,000. Uh, and so we'll help fund your project in the cloud. Uh, the next two links are about learning Google Cloud, right? So there's a lot of uh, free online labs, quests, courses, 
Uh, there's a lot of great stuff in there about, about free training, essentially. I uh, invite you to check those out as well. The link below that is Google Cloud for Researchers. So if you are a researcher, you're also welcome to uh, get some credits and some free training with that. Um, below that is Google Cloud for students. Uh, again, if you are a student, you want to, you're trying to learn some more about Google Cloud, you're welcome to apply to that program as well. Uh, the top right, though, is if you are a faculty and you are saying, hey, I, I'm actually going to teach a class on uh, you know, biomedical research and we're going to use Google Cloud, that's the program you would use where you would get the credits then dish out to your students, right? Uh, so we're very big on free education programs and providing uh, credits to students and faculty as well as researchers. Um, there's a few more links in there. I think one of the ones I would definitely want to highlight is the public sector cloud community. It's the third from the last. Uh, we call it PubSec Connect. Uh, it's run by a woman named Kate Johnson, and it's uh, you know there's there's no sales discussions allowed, right? It's 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 individual to individual. And so essentially other customers talking to other customers about their experience in the cloud, their challenges or successes. Uh, it's a great community. There's a, there's a call, I think every week uh, and a lot of great presenters on there as well. Um, Google Cloud communities below that is basically you can kind of engage with product managers here at Google on your questions. And then I put a certification link there uh, below as well. Uh, if you click once for me, Ashoki, uh, a nice big red box should appear. So. Uh, as much as I try to, to highlight some of these uh, discussion points, uh, there's a session by Alice Kamins who helped put most of these programs together uh, that was delivered yesterday. So I invite you to check that out on the YouTube. Uh, she goes into in-depth into most of these programs. Uh, and again, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, next slide. Oh, so the next slide is, uh, I think, just a quick call to action. The call to action is very simple. It is basically, if you have any questions, if you're interested in learning about strides, Google Cloud, Google Workspace, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, we have some email addresses up here for you, right? So the top is me, I am Mark C. Allen. Uh, had to use my middle initial there. Ashoki is on the call as well. Like I mentioned, she's a business development rep. Uh, if, if you have kind of light or high level questions, uh, she, she would probably be best to email. She could probably get back to you much quicker than I can, but you're welcome to email me as well, right? Uh, please don't think, uh, I don't want your emails, I, I do. Um, the last email there is the Google Cloud Strides team. And so this is the entire account team for NIH. It includes people from support, consulting, we have architects and data scientists on this email. So if you kind of have a broader question, feel free to email that alias and, uh, and we'll be happy to answer your questions for you. Uh, if you have any doubts, feel free to just email me and I will direct you to the right people and, and we'll get you squared away. And the next slide is just Q&A. So I will open the floor for any Q&A. Thank you, Mark, for that very informative talk. So in the interest of time, we are actually going to have any questions that you have for Mark to please forward to us and we can pass those along to you later. Is that all right, Mark? Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, if I went over, I apologize. And uh, but this is oh, a lot no of fun. Worries. 